Okay guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So today I want to talk about something that every homesteader or any country person or any person who's not on city sewer will want to talk about, which is septic systems. We have to take care of them because if we don't, it can cost us a ton of money. If you have a leach field, never seen one back up and seen people have dozers and track hose and everything else out there tearing up their yard, digging up leach field to fix it, you will quickly know why it's important to take care of your septic system. Now, there are many products on the market that you can use for this. I am not a big fan of a lot of these. A lot of these have a lot of byproducts and chemicals and such, and are designed in such a way that you need to have your tank pumped every couple years. Having multiple boys in my house, I can promise you when they come home and tell you, I don't like using the bathroom at school, Dad. You're like, leave your poop at school is what we used to tell them. They don't want to listen. They bring it all home. Really gross. I know, but that's life. So after that, I learned I need to take better care of my septic system. And how I did it was a simple way taught to me by older guys in the business. And it's as simple as this. You take these three items combine them together, put them directly in your septic system if possible. Now I will say that if you must, you can put this down your toilet, but I do not suggest it because if you've ever been baking and you use yeast baking, you know it clots up, which means if you put it down a smaller drain or a drain that's already got something partially blocking it, it can block it and turn hard as a rock. So I would tell you take this outside, Put it in your tank, which we will do at the end of this video, but to get started, all you need is about two and a half cups of water, lukewarm temperature. Then you're going to add in a little over a quarter cup of sugar. You can use a half cup. You don't have to get real particular about this part. And then I'm using three packets of fast rise yeast. All right, you can use any kind of yeast. It does not matter. If you want to get a little more fancy, or if you're a brewer, like you like to do home brew, wine and champagne yeasts live with a lot less oxygen. So they are actually better. So if you're already ordering some to make some wine or champagne at home, that's a good option. But with that said, all I'm going to do is put that in there, leave it alone. You can mix it up if it makes you happy. It will not hurt the yeast no matter what they tell you. We're going to let this sit and we're going to let it grow. This is a starter. This is the same way they do starters for different things like moonshine, beer. It's a starter. Let it come up. As it comes up and builds up, it'll be basically coming to life. Then we will take it outside and I'll show you how to put it in your septic tank. And it's done so as you can see it's developed this kind of frothy head all on top so this starter is completely active and ready to go now we will be pouring this directly into the septic tank I'll take you out there to do that it is an extremely windy day so bear with us now if you do not know where your septic tank is or for some reason you can't get to it or whatever the reason it is you technically can put this down your toilet, flushing it down in different parts, like four different parts, in order to make sure it doesn't stick to the sides of your pipe. But with that said, I want to kind of take a moment real quick and explain why this is important. So if you have, let's say, a drain clogs and you put some drain clog cleaner in there, that's going to start killing off some of the life in your septic tank. Your septic tank is a living thing that that devours basically all your, your waste that goes down. So if you're using large amounts of bleach, or as we have just went through a giant pandemic, everything has antibacterial agents in it now. Every soap does. It seems like everything does. That is gonna kill off the life in your septic tank. So these cleansers, bleach, drain cleaner, toilet bowl cleaner, all of these things are gonna damage your septic tank. And now if you live in city and you have city water, and city sewer, you don't need to do this because it goes off and they handle that end of it. But for us in the country that want to take care of their septic systems, we want to try to limit the use. You don't need to stop, but limit the use 
on these products. Now like bleach, if you're using a cup and it's 20 gallons of water that go through your washer, it's going to water that down. It's not a big deal. But if you're putting a giant bottle of some drain cleaner down a toilet and down something else to get a giant line cleaned, well you just put a giant amount of harsh chemicals in your septic tank which is killing the life in there. So let's take this out there. Let's get our septic system rejuvenated and I will show you how to find the area to put this in because most septic tanks have three entry points. And of course you're filming so it's got to start raining. But we're going to power through because this has got to get down in the septic tank. Now as you can see I've got three lids here. The one that is closest to the house, generally rule of thumb, is going to be the one you're going to want to get into. The first tank holds your solids. The next tanks are affluent or like liquids basically and then it goes out to your leach field. Now, some people are going to take this big cap off and it's going to be super heavy and then right in there is going to be the tank. Mine has a lighter top cap and then a secondary plug cap inside. Now I'm not going to make you guys look at the inside of my septic tank because it's gross. Just like every septic tank is gross. Now that we've got it open, it's real simple. Slowly pour it in there trying not to splash. Now it is important that you get a good seal on this because you don't want it smelling. The neighbors will not be happy with you. But with that said, after you complete doing this, you instantly want to go inside and wash your hands and watch anything that's come in contact with this. And wash it good. Use a quality uh, detergent like Dawn or something. Wash your hands really, really well. Normally I would say use gloves, but just with septic I've learned that gloves really don't make a difference honestly because you end up touching yourself pulling the gloves off. So make sure you get your covers back on. Be careful because if you break one of these covers they are expensive and they're a pain in the butt to find. Now this is a treatment that I would suggest doing every two months maybe. Every month if you think that you have a high usage in your house. If your house is you know got a regular size septic and you've got six seven people in that thing you probably should do it every month. If you have two or three people living in your house, once a month, once every two months, it's not that big a deal. But like I said, I've got to get inside and wash my hands and wash that container because I don't want anything that's had contact with the septic system to get into anything else throughout the day or I don't want to touch myself. But with that said, if you enjoyed the video, please go down and give it a like. I try to keep this basic and explain things as fast and easy as possible. Now, if you haven't already, and I don't know why you wouldn't have, go down, hit that subscribe button, join the family, hit the notification bell so you can see all of our upcoming videos. Let me know what you do to maintain your septic system because I'm always open to new ideas. And with that said, it's getting awful windy out here, so I'm going to get back inside. I will see you guys in the next one.